Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sam. I'm Sadie. And in today's video, we're going to talk about how to know he's the one. To start out with, this is actually our third time trying to record this video because <laughs> things have been going wrong. But I'm just going to share my personal experience and how I found Sam and how I knew he was the one. And yeah. The first question that I asked myself was, does he lead you spiritually? And I know that that's talked about a lot. I feel like people, since we've heard it so many times, we kind of like forget the real meaning behind it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, does he lead you spiritually in your relationship? Does he pray with you? I know that Sam has prayed with me every day since we've met. Does he do Bible studies with you in Christian relationships? It's important that he values purity and really um, takes his relationship with the Lord seriously. So for me, just finding a man who was a spiritual leader um, is really important because one day he's going to lead you, your children, and you just got to make sure that you trust him with his leading. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of to piggyback off of that, I think that a lot of the time there's a lot of emphasis on just, you know, is this person a Christian? You know, do they say that they follow God? I mean, a lot of the world will say that they're a Christian, yeah. say that they love the Lord and everything, but then you know, when push comes to shove, it really doesn't mean that much to them. So finding a person that it is the number one priority, finding someone that's not going to look at you funny when you tell them that you want them to love God more than they love you um, is something that's really, really important. Yeah, I've heard people say, find you a nice boy that goes to church, and it goes so much deeper than that, especially nowadays, because you have so many lukewarm Christians and people who will say, oh yeah, my religion's Christianity, and then you look at their life outside of church, and it's like, how? Like, mm -hmm. how is that your religion? How are you a Christian? Um, not saying that they're not, but what are their actions in their life, like, showing, mm -hmm. you know? So number two um, came later in the game for us, just because you have to get to know someone first. But another question that I wrote down was, is he your best friend? Uh, that's really important. Um, it's not the most important thing because you can still marry somebody and, you know, they could be your buddy, but not your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I know that it's really important, though, that the person you marry, you enjoy spending time with because at some point in your life, Things aren't going to be all butterflies and... Rainbows and unicorns. Yeah, all of that. <laughs> That's not going to be perfect forever. So at some point, you've got to just be friends with them, if that makes sense. you got to be able to hold a decent conversation with them. Um, so for me, that was really important. Um, and yeah, he's become my best friend. And I would... How would I say it? I would have I it no other way. I wouldn't, <laughs> yes, have, that's exactly I wouldn't it. have it any other way. Ask yourself, is he your best friend? Is he someone that I can see myself rocking in a rocking chair with <laughs> <laughs> like 60 years just reminiscing on life and just having a good time? Mm -hmm. And, you know, yesterday we were on our way back from her parents' house and it was about a seven hour drive. Mm -hmm. So if you can't see yourself, if you feel like that would be the most miserable thing ever to be stuck in a car with somebody for like seven hours, if you couldn't find a way to pass the time, you couldn't listen to music or talk to each other or joke around or talk about the future, like... You know, it's not always going to be candlelit dinners mm -hmm. and, you know, all of this different stuff. Like at the end of the day, you know, like she's saying, one day when, when I'm, you know, 80 and I can hardly get up out of the <laughs> rocking chair, you know, we need to still be able to laugh about things, yeah. still be able to be best friends. Yeah. Um, are you content going on walks with him? Mm -hmm. Just, you know, playing sports together if that's your thing? Um, or is it harder for you to kind of find connection in that way. I think that's really important. Okay, number three, um, I put write out the qualities that you want in a future spouse. Um, and in our first video, um, How We Met, I kind of went into more detail about my background and how I thought that I was gonna be single forever. But even in that season of singleness, I still wrote down the qualities that I would love and that I was praying for in my future husband so I think that that's really important um, but another thing if you're dating someone right now 
don't base your list upon that person because it's going to cloud your judgment and all of that type of thing. It's going to make you feel like, oh, it's of course he's the one. I just wrote down all these qualities that he possesses. Write it down based on what you want in your future spouse, not the person you're dating, the person that you can see raising your children. Write down the list of qualities that you want, spiritual qualities, um, just characteristics. Just write it down and let that be a tool to help you gain clarity and peace of your relationships. There are a lot of Christians out there, both men and women, that settle for the first thing that's available. Even though we are all wretched, black-hearted sinners in need of a Savior, you know, we need to make sure that our standards are high. Anyone can just settle for the, the first thing that, that comes available, but I truly believe that God has someone that's going to, you know, enhance your walk with Christ, that's going to, you know, be able to do life together, that's not going to be a constant drain and drag on you. You know, if you're feeling like the person that you're with, you're having to drag them to church, you're having mm -hmm. to drag them to do Bible studies, drag them to have conversations about God, that to me is a serious red flag. Another thing that I did when going through the process of dating Sam and kind of figuring out if he was the one for me, I asked God to open the door if he wanted it to be open and close the door if he wanted it to be closed. And I actually did this even before meeting Sam with other guys. And every single time I would ask God, please, close the store if it's meant to be closed and it would slam right in my face and there were times where I was upset at the beginning because I thought it was something wrong with me like why in the world is everything closing I'm just going to be single forever um but with Sam I mean I asked God to open the door and every single door opened even down to when he visited for the first time I had classes like four days a week or something and all of them just mysteriously got canceled mm -hmm. and they never got canceled that whole semester and they just all got canceled. Mm -hmm. So we were able to spend even more time together and that was just a really interesting thing. Pray that God will open the door if it is his will and if not, trust him if the door does close because I promise you he does have better for you in the end. Mm -hmm. So just trust the process. Don't blame yourself. Don't think that it's something wrong with you. Just understand that God does have more. Don't don't miss the forest for the trees. So, a lot of the time we can't we can't see what God has right around the corner for us and so we get really upset and it's just human nature to be upset if a door, you know, slams in our face. But looking back, you know, I know for myself and I know for Sadie that the doors that God has closed have meant way way bigger and better things mm -hmm. you know we just have to be patient you know and I think that God really wants us to get to that place in our lives where we value what he wants above what we you know think we want think we want or mm -hmm. think that we need God uses that he, he does not want a relationship with somebody to be an idol mm -hmm. and if you pray and say you know hey God you can close this door if you want. I'm going to remain obedient, mm -hmm. going to remain joyful and trust in you. I think that he's really going to bless that. Yeah, if you see a door close, just thank God before anything else. For me, when I would pray, or not even when I, when I would pray for doors to be closed or open or whatever, but the types of guys sometimes that would like me were not godly guys. And so I just remember going like, why is it always these guys that like me, guys that cuss guys that just go out and get drunk, guys that do not live godly lives. Like, why is it always these guys that like me? And I remember mm -hmm. going to my dad and just crying, just telling him like, why? And I would not marry guys like this. For the guys watching this maybe that are wanting a godly woman as a wife and you're cussing and you are getting drunk and you are just living a life that is not godly, then maybe try to work on those things because I know for me when guys like that would like me I would just say I would just kindly decline <laughs> instantly the, the ick and mm -hmm. I know my friends have the same um, convictions as well so mm -hmm. so another question that I asked myself was does he have integrity this is so important because you need to know who he is when he's with you when he's at church when he's at school when he's at his job and is he the same person? Because mm -hmm. if at church he seems like this amazing godly man 
and yet you just bump into him at school or something and he is just a polar opposite person and his convictions are completely different. I think that that is a huge, huge red flag. Um, I know that for me, I've always strived to be someone that if you bumped into me at the grocery store, I'll be the same person as if you bumped into me at church. I think that that's a standard we should all strive to live by and that's who Sam was. He was the same person on the basketball court. He still had that integrity and still acted like a godly man and carried himself like that. So um, just ask yourself that and if he's not, just kind of get to the reason of why he isn't like that. And he doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because mm -hmm. I've had a lot of times where I was playing basketball where I really let my competitive mm -hmm. nature get ahead of me. I didn't cuss or anything, but I did not exactly behave like Jesus. As far as the way that they behave in public settings, you know, do they even go to church if mm -hmm. they're not with you or trying to impress you? Like, they should care more about their personal relationship with Christ yeah, on sure. their own because the only way that someone can truly love you, and something that I tell myself all the time, even if I don't feel like it, I know that I need to take time in the Bible every day because I can't love Sadie mm. the right way if, if I'm not right with God. So really finding somebody that prioritizes that, that prioritizes you know, acting the right way no matter who's watching. Being a chameleon is not an attractive thing. It, it is a huge, huge red flag. Mm -hmm. And I'm speaking for myself and also for my friends who are also Christian women. So the last question that I asked myself, and this was really big for me, um, other than him being a spiritual leader, I feel like this could be number one. And that is, would you want your children to become just like him one day? So if he struggles with anger issues or he cusses or is getting drunk and all of that type of thing, would you want your children to become just like that? Because they're going to be around their dad every single day. Um, so they're going to develop those qualities one way or the other. So just make sure that the person you marry has the good qualities that you want. Um, and another question to kind of deepen that even further is, would you want your daughter to date someone just like that person? Um, I think that that will kind of help you open your eyes to kind of take yourself out of it because there's obviously going to be that bias with you there because you may overlook some things because you love the person. But if you kind of add a hypothetical situation of if my daughter dated this person, would I approve? Would I be happy? Would I love that? And just kind of go from there. If you can't do it for yourself, if you can't stop dating somebody that's a really bad person for yourself, please just stop it for your children because mm -hmm. eventually, you know, if you keep on letting it go, you are going to marry that person and then eventually kids are going to follow somehow. Mm -hmm. And the absolute worst thing that you can do is end up with a kid, with someone who is a rageaholic, who's a danger to your children, who's going to end up putting your kids, you know, in, in danger mm -hmm. consistently. And then, you know, I don't believe in divorce whatsoever, but mm -hmm. a lot of people, they'll end up divorcing this person and say, they're not who I thought they would be. Mm -hmm. And then you end up basically conceding that you're going to surrender your child on weekends yeah. or alternating yeah. weeks or something to go be with this dangerous person all by themselves. At the end of the day, does he love you? Does he love God first? I think that that will answer all the questions. And, and love is not just that ooey gooey feeling. Mm -hmm. Love is an action and a choice every single day. Love is being a servant to the other person. Like it really truly is. Like it's me putting myself second or even third because it's God, then it's her, and then it's myself. And actually it's everybody else before that as well you know it's a servant's mindset these are the questions that i asked myself and just the things that i did in finding sam you may disagree you may do things completely differently but this is just what i did mm -hmm. and here we are the lord answered my prayers that's how i knew that he was the one mm -hmm. and if you guys have any other tips that you want to add just for anyone else that might be watching then just leave those down in the comment section below mm -hmm. I'm trying to build a little family here, build, you know, a, a community of people that are going to encourage each other. Also, if you have any video ideas or questions for us, just leave them in the comments as well or message us on Instagram. We'd love to hear about it. But anyway, we will see you guys next time. See you next week.